appreciate you know that. Yeah. That was don't freak out. If you ever have one, don't freak out. You're not gonna lose your sight. Yeah. It's just gonna be a surgery. My doctor, I was at the Massachusetts Hospital getting treated. They didn't have the Good morning, church. Good morning. So happy that you're here today. Uh, we're going to worship the Lord this morning. We're so excited to do that. If you'll please stand and sing with us and uh, help us rejoice in the Lord. One, two, three, four. Oh 
This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life that I would be set free. This is amazing grace. This is amazing grace. Amen. All right. Isn't God great? Let's sing about how great He is. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God.
our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great. Welcome to worship. You may be seated. All right. Well, I'd like to welcome you this morning to Wakulla Springs Baptist Church. If you're our guest, know that we're glad that you're here and that you've chosen to worship with us today. We do have Children's Church again as planned. I know we've had a little bit of a break, right? Because of Christmas time and then we had a fifth Sunday. And so our kids that are kindergarten and down will head through these doors over here. And then first through fifth grade, if you choose to go to Children's Church, you'll be out through these doors over here to building number two. And you'll have some awesome teachers over there uh, with you for Children's Church. Before we continue in worship, I want to share with you out of the Valley of Vision, which we've read from a few times, a, prayer, a Puritan prayer book. Um, and this one kind of points more towards the new year. So it kind of gives us a, a, a vision. It's in some old English, so you'll have to bear with me a little bit at times, but... Um, here we go. This one's titled Voyage. It says, O oh Lord, my ship sails on a restless sea. Grant that Jesus may sit at the helm and steer me safely. Suffer no adverse currents to divert my heavenward course. Let not my faith be wrecked amid storms and shoals. Bring me to harbor with flying pennants, whole unbreached, cargo unspoiled. I ask great things, expect great things, shall receive great things. I venture on thee wholly, fully, my wind, sunshine, anchor, and defense. The voyage is long, the waves high, the storms pitiless, but my helm is held steady. Thy word secures safe passage. Thy grace wafts me onward. My haven is guaranteed. This day will bring me nearer home. Grant me holy consistency in every transaction. My peace flowing as a running tide. My righteousness as every chasing wave. Help me to live circumspectly with skill to convert every care into prayer. Halo my path with gentleness and love. Smooth every asperity of temper. Let me not forget how easy it is to occasion grief. May I strive to bind up every wound and pour oil on all troubled waters. May the world this day be happier and better because I live. Let my mass before me be the Savior's cross and every oncoming wave the fountain in His side. Help me, protect me in the moving sea until I reach the shore of unceasing praise. Just a great reminder that Jesus is with us. If we're believers, Jesus is with us. God cares for us no matter what, what the world holds in front of us, no matter what the seas look like ahead of us, God is with us. He cares for us. He loves us. And I love the quote there towards the end, may, may the day be happier and better because I live. But that can only be if he lives within me and lives through me. Um, and we can rejoice in that truth as we head into the new year. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for your many blessings, we're thankful for your love and your grace, we're thankful for this church and your work in and through this church, and also your work in and through us individually as believers. We ask for your strength, for your guidance, for your mercy, for your grace, Lord, for us to, to trust you in all things, to follow you in all things, and to love the way that you love us. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Amen. Please stand. We're going to sing a couple more songs and worship the Lord. Sing with us if you know these words. And I've searched the world. It couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise, treasures that fade, are never enough. The 
you came along put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing nothing is better Lord, you've seen them all. You still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain, the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Sing it out. Oh, there's nothing. Better than you, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better.
so much for this powerful word that you've given us. At this time, we're going to release our children of Children's Church. Kids, make sure you wait for your teachers. powerful. It's beautiful and it's wonderful. Lord, we just thank you for the beginning of this new year. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your church where your word is preached. And Lord, we pray that you continue to guide us and keep us and move us forward in every aspect of our life. We pray that your, your word invades every aspect of us and transforms us to a deeper and deeper relationship with you. In your name we pray, amen. I'd like to introduce you this morning to Alfredo Bertio. Alfredo is 92 years old. And he set a world record in October for being the oldest person, excuse me, the oldest man. That's what the article said. I don't know if a woman older has done this. But the article I read this morning said he set a world record in October of being the oldest man to hike the Grand Canyon from rim to rim. He did that in October. Started on the north rim, hiked down into the canyon, spent the night, hiked out up the south rim. 92 years old. It's almost a 24 mile journey. <clears throat> 34 hours that it took him total, 21 hours, 15 minutes of actual hiking time. Now, how do you think that happened? Well, step by step, Travis said, certainly. <laughs> That's true. But it, but it didn't just happen, right? So it wasn't that Alfredo was out walking one day and said, hey, there's the Grand Canyon. I think I'll just um, head down the trail on the north rim. And look at me, I'm at the bottom, so I'll head up the south side. It, it didn't just happen. There was, there was planning there was um, 
intent, like this was an intentional thing that he did. Obviously, he's blessed with good health and strength that um, normally at 92, you wouldn't have the strength to do that. But um, he said in the article that about 74 or 75, he started living healthy. So um, he went a long time not doing that. He's obviously made a big turnaround. Um, but, it, but it didn't just happen. And that's pretty incredible. 92, 24 miles, not flat miles, mind you, but down into the Grand Canyon and then across and then up the other side. Um, he began training last January, so a year ago now. And for nine months, he walked eight miles a day. That was his training regimen. Um, that got him ready, so he started at a point and said, okay, I'm looking out, and this is January, and in October, I want to, I plan to, my desire is to hike rim to rim on the Grand Canyon. But again, that doesn't just happen. So he started last January with that in mind, and he started preparing himself, and he started walking, and he started preparing, and he started living a certain way in order that he could accomplish what he desired to accomplish. He committed himself to it, and, and, and he is. He's a great example to all of us who need to maybe spend a little less time on the couch, a little less time with the TV, a little more time outside uh, seeking to be maybe a little more physically active and physically fit in the new year. That's a great goal. We should follow in his footsteps, not necessarily to the Grand Canyon, uh, if you want to, uh, more power to you, but um, just to set our minds, hey, I want to be more physically fit this year. That's a great goal to have. And, and Alfredo, who is from Germany, by the way, Alfredo is a good example of that. Well, obviously, you didn't come here today, and I didn't come here today to merely talk about hiking the Grand Canyon. So this morning, I really would like to introduce you to a few more people in addition to Alfredo that can serve as an example to us, but in a different way. They're not Grand Canyon hikers, <clears throat> but they do give us a good example to follow, a good direction for our lives in 2024 and they're going to help us today from Luke chapter 2 they're going to help us today to think about our lives to think clearly about our lives and the direction of our lives as we move into this new year so how about we take a few minutes together and we we just think about the direction of our lives and the choices that we would like to make in 2024 what what do you want your life to be like in 2024 what is it that you desire to be? What is it that you desire to do? What is it that if you were completing this sentence, I want to, what would be in that blank for you? Well, let me introduce you to two people that you know and two people that you may not know that serve as an example of good directions for our lives this year that God would lead us to. They're found in Luke chapter 2, and we begin in verse 21, and the first two you know well, they're Joseph and Mary. We've talked a lot about Joseph and Mary in the build-up to Christmas, and you're familiar with Joseph and Mary, and let's see what they did. So Jesus has been born, all the shepherds and angels and, and all of those things have happened, and they've remained in Bethlehem. Verse 21, when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, what, what's happening there? Well, on the eighth day, Joseph and Mary took Jesus to be circumcised. 
Now, why do they do that? Because God said so. That's why. That, that's why they did it. Because that's what was written in the scriptures, and that's what they needed to do if they wanted to live in obedience to the Lord. So they took their son, Jesus, and they took him and had him circumcised on the eighth day according to the word of God. Now, at that time, they officially named him, it says in verse 21, his name was called Jesus. Why? The name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So why did they name him Jesus? Because God said so. God sent an angelic messenger down to tell Mary, you're going to have a baby and you're going to call his name Jesus. The same angel went to Joseph and said, hey, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife and you're going to name this child Jesus for he'll save his people from their sins. So, so they took Jesus on the eighth day. Why not the sixth day? Because God said the eighth day. Why not the, the, the twelfth day? Because the law of God was you did this on the eighth day. And, and they named him Jesus. Why not Sam? Why not Billy? Because that's what God told them to do. Do you see that? You see a pattern here. It's because God said so. And then uh, about the 40th day after his birth. So, so you go eight days and you have circumcision. And then you go, I think it's 33 days. So right around the 40th day, um, you have when, when Mary's time of purification has ended according to the law of Moses, when that was completed, they bring Jesus to Jerusalem and they present him to the Lord. This is the presentation of the firstborn male to the Lord. And this was required by the Lord. It says right there in verse 23, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And, and in addition to that, as they present him to the Lord, they offer a sacrifice. Now, the law required that a lamb be presented as well as a dove. You'll notice, however, that they presented two doves or two pigeons. Why? Well, this reveals to us their financial status. In, in, the, in, in the law, God made an accommodation for people who couldn't afford to purchase a lamb to present at this time, and he allowed them to present a bird instead of a lamb. It was an accommodation to people who were poor. Joseph and Mary, well, they weren't wealthy. They, they were poor people. Um, someone wrote this, and I'll just pass it along. It's not the main point today. But be careful that you don't despise poor people. Or you might end up being like someone who would have despised the family in which Jesus was raised. Hardworking, no doubt, but didn't have enough money to um, do the normal that the law required, but God made an accommodation right in the law, and so they present, <clears throat> they present two birds as an offering. By the way, this also kind of blows our nativity sets up a little bit, right? Because the traditional nativity set, you see the baby in the manger, you see Joseph and Mary, you see the shepherds, and you see the three wise men around. Right there at the manger scene. Well, if the wise men would have come to the manger, they would have had the money to buy the lamb, right? Because they gave them gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They could have bought a lot of lambs. So those were guys that showed up later, not on the night of the birth. But Joseph and Mary, they come and they, they present Jesus to the Lord. They offer a sacrifice. Now, can I ask you, why did they do that? Because God said so. That's why. That's why they did it. It's not because they, they just felt good about it or had a special feeling in their heart about it. It's because this is what God told them to do. And they were living their lives in obedience to God's word. They were, they were putting it into practice, not just for a test, like on what day did God require the, the sacrifice, no, 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 and, and what about the sacrifice, what type of sacrifice, no, 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 that's not the point. They had to know that, yes, but their knowledge was for the point that they would practice that, that they would do what it said. Five times in this passage, it's mentioned God's law. 
they did it because this is what God's law said or God's law said this or it references God's law five times. Joseph and Mary, you know them well. They lived their lives in obedience to God's word. I don't mean they were sinlessly perfect. That's not the point. We're talking about they chose a path for their lives. We're going to take seriously the scripture. We're going to seek to do what it says. We're going to seek to live it out in our lives. So we're circumcising on the eighth day. We're presenting the sacrifice and presenting uh, the, the new male to the Lord on about the 40th day. Can I encourage you today? That's a good example to follow. I mean, we haven't put a lot of prints in the mud yet for 2024, right? It's still mostly fresh. If God grants us life, there's still a lot of it stretching out in front of us. So as you stand at the threshold of a new year, you have to make some choices about what kind of person will you be? What, what will be the direction of your life? What is it that you want? I want to, and I can't think of much better than I want to obey God's word. That's the direction I want my life to go. I want to do what I do because that's what God told me to do. And that's the way I want to live my life because I know, number one, it's best. And number two, I want to please him. want to live in obedience to the Lord. I pray that 2024 will be the year of God's word and the year of God's will in your life. I pray that obedience will be the path that you choose. Don't live according to your traditions. Don't live according to your superstitions. Live according to God's word. Set your heart toward obedience, not just knowledge. You have to have knowledge in order to obey. But, Lord, I want to do what it says. You know, so many people live, well, they just kind of make it up. And they throw a little God in there. Just kind of like um, um, sprinkles on a cupcake. Sprinkles on a cupcake are just external, right? You can wipe them off if you need to, right? But how about get the egg out of it? Remove the flour. We're talking about after it's already cooked, right? You can't do that because it's a part of the fabric. It's a part of, of what it is. And if you're like, well, I'm going to eat this cupcake, but I'm not going to eat any flour. Well, no, you're not. You can't wipe that off. And so as it relates to obedience to the scriptures, don't, don't just seek to sprinkle that on your life this year, but that it is the fabric of your life. Lord, I want to obey you. I want to... I want to do what you've called me to do. God, give me the grace to do that. God, give me the power by your spirit to do that. Don't live your life according to your traditions. There are many traditions that people think will advantage them. Let's stick with the scripture. Don't live your life according to superstitions. There are many superstitions that people have that... Um, they might use the scripture to as a launching pad into those superstitions. Um, I've, I've been really shocked. You know I like to read history, and I've, I'm reading about a period in history that I've never read about. I'm reading about the Salem witch trials, and I've never read about those, and I didn't know. But see, the Salem witch trials were done in Massachusetts, right outside of Boston. What, about 20 miles is Salem, Salem town and Salem village. And so... Um, these people who Travis read from a Puritan prayer book. I don't know if it came out of Salem, doubt it. But these were Puritans who were radically committed to the word of God. But also they had some crazy mixed up superstitious beliefs that they mingled in there with it. So much so that they ended up hanging 19 people as witches, many of them, were God-fearing church members of their church. Why? Because of some weirdo, whacked-up, superstitious beliefs that they had. Don't mix scripture with superstitions. You say, we're not doing a witch trial. Yeah, I know, but we do other things. I mean, yes, 
For God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. They would have believed that. But they also believed a witch couldn't cry. Except for three tears from the left eye. They believed that as fully as they believed the other. Yes, God created the heavens and the earth six days. They would have believed that. But also... There are people flying around on brooms in the night. They believe that equally. So much so that if you were accused, if you didn't confess, you would be hanged. 19 people in about six months. It's blown my mind. Like how could these people who believe this do the opposite of that. So what they did was they took a word from the Bible, which, which is condemned and witchcraft, but they took their superstition to define it, not let scripture define it. That's very dangerous. Hey, set your heart towards obedience to the scriptures. We just want to stick with the scriptures. There's plenty here, right? We don't have to make stuff up. There's plenty here. Lord, give me a heart to obey you. 2024. I want that to be a path of my life. And okay, if I hike the Grand Canyon, that's a bonus on top, right? But the path I really want to take is obedience to your word. Now let's look at a second guy. His name was Simeon. You may not know Simeon as well as you know Joseph and Mary. Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This is verse 25. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Christ. If you look out there at Simeon, maybe this desire will build up in your heart. I want to walk with God. I want to walk with God. Now, that's not a different path from obedience to Scripture. It is the same path. But, but it's just a different emphasis that we want to point out in his life. I want to walk with God. Simeon was a man that walked with God. He, he, he believed God. What did it mean? What do you mean he walked with God? Well, he's a godly man. He took seriously what God's word had said. It says in verse 25, he was just and devout. He wasn't a faker. He wasn't a hypocrite. He's not sinlessly perfect. That's not what I'm saying. He was just real. He really did love the Lord. He really did want to obey the Lord. He really did live a godly life by the enablement of God's Holy Spirit in his life. He was a godly man. He was a man of faith. He believed the Lord. It says he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. You see that? That means the promises of God about the Messiah, he believed them. He was waiting in faith. He kept waiting. He kept waiting for God to send the Messiah into the world. So he believed the Bible. He he was waiting on the Messiah. God had promised, Simeon believed the promises of God, and he waited, and he waited, and he waited. He waited patiently, expecting the arrival of the Messiah. He was standing on the promises, you might say, to quote the old hymn. And Simeon kept on believing God. Now, we don't know how old he was. The general idea is that he was an older man, and I think that's accurate, but it doesn't specifically give his his age He's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting. He keeps believing God. He's a man of faith. He remains faithful. He remains godly. He keeps waiting, he keeps waiting. Sometimes it's in the wait that we fall by the wayside because we get weary of waiting. We get weary of waiting for God to to fulfill his promises or to answer our prayers or to bring about this change in our lives or in someone else's life that we're praying for or to to grant us what we're asking for, what we need. We get weary in the waiting. Simeon, he just kept waiting. Now, God God gave him a special revelation. You see, um, Simeon, he, he, he was a man who was led by the Holy Spirit. It says also the Holy Spirit was upon him. So he's a godly man. He's a man of faith. He believed the Lord, and he's led by the Holy Spirit. And, and he walked with God, and God had given him a promise. Now, uh, God, to our knowledge, hadn't given anyone else this promise. But it had been revealed to him, verse 26, by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Christ. So uh, Simeon had this special, unique revelation from God's Holy Spirit. Simeon, 
you're not going to die until you see the Messiah. But he didn't know when, he didn't know where, he just knew before they put him in the ground, the Messiah is going to be on the scene and he would see him with his own eyes. It was a special and unique promise from God. So Simeon is walking in faith. By the way, we have a multitude of special and unique promises from God, don't we? The scriptures are filled with them. We need to keep waiting and walking with God, being people of faith, trusting the Lord. What, what do you want to be in 2024? What do you want to do in 2024? How about this? I want to walk with God. That should be a desire of your heart if you're, a, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ. I want to walk with God. And what did this lead to in his life? Well, it led to satisfaction. You know, a lot of people aren't satisfied. They're just, there's just a general sense of dissatisfaction. Simeon, he was a man that God brought him to a place of satisfaction in his life. Notice it says in verse 27, he came by the spirit into the temple. So it's not that he just happened to be at the temple when Jesus' parents were there presenting Jesus and doing that sacrifice. No, God's Holy Spirit led him to the temple when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law. Simeon walks over, takes the baby into his arms, and he blesses God. And here's what he says, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. So you see, now he knows this is the Messiah. And, and now I've seen the Messiah. And God now, Lord, I'm satisfied. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to die. I'm ready. I'm, my, I'm, I'm done. I'm good. I can go home satisfied. Because what you promised, now here he is. So he takes this baby and he has this, this deep sense of satisfaction. You know, when you walk with God, I mean, there's a lot of hills and valleys. There's a lot of curves. There's a lot of difficulties. But at the end of it, there's satisfaction. There's satisfaction with Jesus. There's satisfaction in knowing this is the promise of God in my life. There's satisfaction in knowing I belong to him. My sins are forgiven. I'm on my way home. I'm at peace. Simeon was at peace. He believed the promises of God. Are, are you at peace this morning? Let, let's just be real. Do you have the peace that comes, the peace of God, the peace from God of knowing Jesus, that your sins are forgiven, you have, you're at peace with God in that there's no enmity between you and God. Your sins have been covered by the blood of Jesus through faith in his name. But also there's the peace of God which rules and reigns in our hearts that we're just, we're satisfied with Jesus. Are you satisfied today? Are you walking with God? Satisfaction was one of the results of Simeon walking with God. Also, he had insight and understanding. Insight and understanding. Look at verse 30. It's really important. For my eyes have seen your salvation. Now, watch it now. He's hold, who's he holding? Jesus. Notice he didn't say, it would have been true, but he didn't say, my eyes have seen the Messiah. It's true. My eyes have seen the Christ. That was true. Oh, but he said, my eyes have seen your salvation. God gave him insight to know Jesus is salvation. I pray that God will give all of us that same insight, right? Jesus is salvation. There is no salvation outside of Jesus because Jesus is salvation. He is the Savior. He was announced, remember, to the shepherds, unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior. And Simeon, when he holds this baby, this is the Savior. This is salvation. I pray that, that God would open all of our eyes to that. If you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, if you've never come to him in faith, repenting of your sins, believing on Jesus Christ, oh, I pray that God would show you the truth of this. Jesus is salvation. And, and child of God, as you, as you walk with Christ, I pray that this will be a year of you walking with Jesus, 
living in obedience to his word, walking down the path of I'm walking with God, I'm walking with the Lord. It doesn't matter if I'm going to, to the baseball game or if I'm going to work tomorrow morning or I'm, or I'm homeschooling my kids or I'm, or I'm out hunting or fishing or whatever the case may be. God, I want to walk with you and I pray that you would open my eyes and give me insight into your word. I pray that God would show us all that Jesus is salvation. And also notice this is bigger than us. Simeon had insight to know this is bigger than us. My eyes have seen your salvation, verse 31, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles in the glory of your people Israel. Simeon understood what most didn't. Hey, Jesus is a savior. He's the savior. He's salvation. And it's for all people. Not just for the Jewish people. Certainly there's a particular emphasis there. But not just for the Jewish people. He is the glory of your people Israel. But he's going to be a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles. Simeon understood that by the Holy Spirit. This is, this is for us too. This is bigger than us, Simeon would say. Bigger than just the Jewish people. This is for all people. You know, God uses us to shine that light. Jesus is the light, but he shines through us. Not just to this county, certainly to this county, but beyond to the world. That the revelation of Christ would go to all peoples, even to the Gentiles, of which I'm assuming all of us are. I don't think there are any Jewish people in here. But that's not all. Simeon wasn't done. And don't panic. You're only, <clears throat> don't panic. You're only going to meet three out of the four people today, okay? So if you looked at your watch and say, he's just on the third one. We'll, we'll save Anna for next week, okay? No, no problem. Now think of how this would be if you're taking your precious newborn baby into the temple to present him to the Lord and offer the sacrifice and the strange guy that you've never met before walks up and takes the baby from your arms. Now that could be trouble, right? <laughs> We've got a new grandbaby. Um, I don't think that would go well. I think, I think um, before I could get them, Penny would <laughs> and tear into him like, yeah, you don't even take that baby. Don't touch my baby. Don't touch this grandbaby. Um, we don't know you. Well, Joseph and Mary, um, they marveled, it says in verse 33, at the things which were spoken of him. So they're, they're listening to Simeon, Simeon, and he's giving this revelation about their child. And they just are astonished. They just marvel at what God has done. But Simeon's not finished. He's going to speak to Mary. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother. Hello. <laughs> Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which we've spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now there's a lot packed right into there. A whole lot packed right into there. And, and, and it has great application right to us today, except for that one part about Mary's soul being pierced with a sword. Um, <clears throat> this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel. Simeon knew by the Holy Spirit, some people, they're going to stumble over the Christ He'll be a stone of stumbling and a stone of offense. They will fall. But some will rise. It's actually the word for resurrection. Some will be resurrected. Some will reject him and some will receive him. You know, that's still true today. It was true in Jesus' day in his ministry. It's true in the early church. It's been true down through the ages. There are some that that reject Christ, some that receive Christ. In fact, John wrote that um, he came to his own, his own received him not, but as many as did receive him, to them he gave the right 
for them to become the children of God, even to those that believe on his name. So, so this child, he's destined. Some will fall over him, but some he will be the cornerstone of the rebuilding of their lives. He's going to be spoken against. Boy, did that happen. He's a demon, has a demon, does this by the Lord of the demons. Um, yeah, he's, he's born in fornication, all kinds of accusations against Christ. He committed blasphemy. He um, worked on Saturday, violated the Sabbath by healing someone. I mean, just, it never stopped. It never stopped. He was spoken against. He's still spoken against, isn't he? Like the Jesus of the Bible still spoken against. I mean, it's everywhere. And then specifically to Mary, a sword will pierce through your own soul also. Now, think about Mary. She's the mother of Jesus. She's the one that God chose to bring him into the world through the virgin birth. Think about her watching her son being rejected repeatedly. And even herself at times misunderstanding what his ministry was. There were times when his own family thought he had lost his mind. And they came to, um, to, to seize him by force with her and his brothers at one point. Um, and then think about ultimately the cross. Mary was there. Think about standing at the foot of the cross and watching your son being brutalized mocked, rejected, spit upon, whipped, nailed to the cross. I would say a sword pierced her soul, a sword of sorrow. So as you think about the plan of God and the unfolding of God's plan, ultimately it leads us to glory, right? But there's some tough parts of the path along the way, right? That's hard. It's hard for Mary to stand there and watch Jesus die on the cross. It's necessary that he die on the cross. That's the plan of God. But there's some, there's some rough patches along the way. So don't let anybody fool you into thinking that's not real. Then finally, the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. It, it really was revealed um, through the ministry of Jesus that um, some people weren't what they appeared to be. And what they really were in their hearts was revealed by their reaction to Jesus Christ. Simeon waited. He believed. He walked with God. God used him to speak a word, a prophecy to Joseph and Mary. What will you do with your life in 2024? How about this? I want to walk with God. You have to know him to walk with him. You really do. The only way you're going to know him is by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. As we come to salvation, we're called to walk with God. To just walk with the Lord. And that's not just a Sunday morning thing. That's a lifestyle. That, it, that touches every part of our lives. I want to be a godly person who believes God's word, waits on God, and walks with God. Now, it is impressive to hike the Grand Canyon from rim to rim at 92. I'm going to give you that. It's even more impressive to live in obedience to God's word at any age. It's even more impressive to walk with God every day and to serve the Lord. If you want to hike the Grand Canyon this year, Go for it. I'll be a cheerleader for you. But it's more important the walk that you do tomorrow. And I challenge you right now, again, we haven't put a lot of footprints yet on 2024. I challenge you to be intentional. I challenge you to be purposeful. I challenge you to ask God, God, help me.
help me to live in obedience to your word. Help me to walk with you this year. Again, that's more important than any world record that could ever be set. Walk with God. Walk the path of scriptures. Make those your goals in 2024. Stand with me. Lord, help us to be purposeful, thoughtful, intentional. Lord, even, yes, to make a commitment. to live out the principles and precepts and commandments of your word, to do them because you said so. And Lord, also to, to just walk with you day by day, trusting you, believing you, waiting on you. Lord, create those desires in us if they're not there. And Lord, as they become our desires, give us the power and ability by your Holy Spirit to fulfill them, to do them, to live them. Oh, God, help us. Lord, I pray if there's anyone that's listening, either in the room or by, uh, by the video feed, I pray that if there's anyone who doesn't know Jesus, that your spirit would show them that he is salvation, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And I pray that they would come to Jesus. And I pray this in his name. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior all the day long.
Lord, thank you again for your word today. Thank you for just bringing Jesus to us and for salvation to come through him. Lord, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We pray that you continue to guide us in this new year. In your name we pray.